I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. In over 200 years, the United States of America has seen its executive branch of government under the control of but 44 men. These men saw the country through times of war and peace, through times of reconstruction and stability, and through times of hardship and prosperity. Each man who has taken the presidential oath has had a plethora of difficult responsibilities before him. Often a divisive political figure, the president must pass or veto United States laws, nominate federal judges, like those who serve on the Supreme Court, and act as commander-in-chief of the United States Armed Forces. Who were these great men? How has their leadership shaped the country, government, and way of life we now know today? And what does the future hold for the office of the President of the United States of America? Join us as we examine the lives, service, and influence of the United States Presidents, from politics to power. George Washington not only has the distinction of being America's first president, he is also the first leader in history to achieve victory in a revolution against a colonial empire. Commander-in-chief of the Continental Army, during the American Revolution, his strategy as a general won the Americans many victories over the Redcoats, such as the operations that took place in Trenton, New Jersey in December of 1776 and January of 1777. Washington and his men famously crossed the icy Delaware River three times, once into Trenton to defeat the British under Johann Rawl, then back to Pennsylvania, carrying prisoners and supplies captured during the surprise attack, and finally, once more, under the iciest conditions yet, to defeat British reinforcements commanded by Lord Cornwallis at Princeton, sending the Redcoats into retreat. His strategy also led the Continental Army to victory at Saratoga in 1777 and Yorktown in 1781, two decisive victories for the Americans. While Washington had a preternatural sense of leadership, judge of character in selecting generals, and a strong gift for strategy, the general was a humble man who only served in the revolution at the insistence of his peers in the Second Continental Congress. Indeed, George Washington only served his country because he felt it was his duty, not for any political or personal betterment. As Washington writes to his wife with the news of his appointment before the revolution, you may believe me when I assure you in the most solemn manner that so far from seeking this appointment, I have used every endeavor in my power to avoid it, not only from my unwillingness to part with you and the family, but from a consciousness of its being a trust too great for my capacity. The humble but great general seemed a natural choice for the office of president when the newly minted United States Constitution created the office, along with the other two branches of government in 1787. He would serve in the office from April 30th, 1789 through March 4th, 1797, choosing not to seek a third term 
and establishing the two-term custom. The Electoral College, also established by the famous document, unanimously elected Washington to the presidency, with the next highest vote count making John Adams vice president. Initially declining the $25,000 a year salary voted upon by the first United States Congress, Washington was later convinced to accept the pay to avoid establishing a precedent of only the independently wealthy holding the office. Washington's humility shaped the office, and he took great care to mold any ceremony the presidency might bring into something that would be uniquely American and not something that might resemble the royal courts of Europe. Many in the Congress wanted to address the president as Your Excellency, or other fanciful titles. But Washington chose to simply be addressed as Mr. President. Called the father of his country, even in his own lifetime, Washington also managed to serve as president in ways that few, if any others, have. One of only two sitting presidents to lead an army on the field of battle, Washington led a militia of 13,000 men to quell an insurrection known as the Whiskey Rebellion, when belligerents protesting a whiskey tax wreaked havoc in Pennsylvania in 1794. Washington was also the only prominent founding father to leave instructions in his will for all of his slaves to be freed. While Washington personally opposed slavery, the president never challenged the issue for fear of dividing the nation that was in its mere infancy. He wrote, There is not a man living who wishes more sincerely than I do to see a plan adopted for the abolition of slavery. Retiring to his plantation at Mount Vernon, Virginia, after his presidency, Washington died on Saturday, December 14, 1799, at age 67. His last words were reported to be, "'Tis well." Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.